Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate a new functionality that allows the authors to bind a parameter to list filter. Binding parameters to filters enables the author to take greater control over how filters behave and how they can be exposed to your dashboard consumers. Now in this example, I have a dashboard filter bar. Order priority is a list filter. When you open up the list filter, you can see a new experience that we have added in to bind a parameter to this list filter. So when you bind a parameter to the list filter, what it really means is that the parameter is now listening for any values that the user selects from uh, order priority in this case. And uh, depending on the parameter definition, the parameter can accept or reject the values that the filter is sending to the parameter that it's bound to. Now, there are two ways to bind the parameter to a filter. You can create a parameter from the parameter panel, or you can open up the list filter, click on the binding UI, and we've exposed a quick action link that allows you to create a parameter. When you hit on create parameter, this is going to automatically create a parameter in the backend, and it's also binding the parameter to this list filter. Now, let's open up the parameter definition and review it. And you can see that the parameter is very simple of text data type and the possible values is set to any, which means that any values can be accepted by the parameter and there's no initial value. Now at this point, because the parameter is set to accept any possible values, any filter values that the user select is passed to the parameter. And you can confirm this by dropping the order priority parameter onto the filter tab on the top. And you can see that the parameter is now holding critical and high as values that the user selected. So when you create a parameter of possible type as uh, any in the definition, the parameter and the filter will always remain in sync. Now let's go ahead and change the parameter definition to accept specific possible values. I'm going to say that the parameter can only take in a critical and uh, let's just say hi, right? And when you save the parameter and bind it to the filter, and let's say that the user selected critical, low, and medium, at this point, the parameter is going to check for these filter values against the possible values. And because low and medium are not part of the parameter definition, it will reject those values and it will only store critical as the parameter value. But you can see that the visualization is still filtered based on the values that the user applied on this list filter. In this example, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use the values selected on a specific visualization to be passed on as filters to other visualizations on the canvas. This approach provides a more flexible way that allows you to control the specific visualizations that you want the selected filter values to be passed to in a given canvas. Now let's start by adding a city filter to this bar chart. So I'm going to drop in city to the filter grammar to go to the binding surface and click on create parameter. This is a quick link that we have exposed on the binding surface. And when you click on create parameter, you can see that a parameter is automatically created behind the scenes and the filter is also bound to the parameter that we just created. Now let's go ahead and open the parameter definition. And you would notice that the parameter definition is pretty simple. It's creating a possible value as any, which means that this city parameter can hold any values that the filter is gonna to send to it. Now, as a user interacts and selects values from this list filter, Notice that the values are passed on to the visualization. At the same time, if you were to drop the city parameter as a filter column, you can also see that the values of the parameter is also set to the values that the filter was set. And this is because the parameter is set to accept any possible values from the list filter. Now, our goal with this exercise is to be able to pass these city values to selected visualizations on the canvas. Now, to do this, I don't want to pass these values to my tile visualization, but I do want the city values to be applied as filters to this bar chart, uh, which shows the sales by customer segment and city. So I'm gonna select this bar chart, 
and I'm going to add an expression filter. Let's call this as city filter. And let's bring in the city column from the data set. And I'm just going to write a simple expression that says that city is in the parameter value. So let's do a default value is no value, validate the expression and click apply. Now, when you click apply, you can see that the values for the city Adelaide and Ahmed Nagar is being passed to this bar chart, which is further broken down by consumer uh, customer segment that shows the different customer segments in the x-axis of this bar chart. And the city, as you can see from the legend, is very specific to the filter values that we selected from this specific bar chart. Now, let's go ahead and change the filter values. Uh, I'm going to select Austin. And you can see that the filter is getting applied to the visualization and also being passed on to the other bar chart, which now shows the data of customer segment breakdown by the three different cities. In summary, binding a parameter to a list filter allows the author to creatively and dynamically pass values of the parameter from the filter it's bound to within the scope of the workbook definition. Thank you for watching this video.